Well, what about what's in the pipeline right now? Which agents uh, uh, and or mechanisms for the treatment of cardiometabolic disorders are currently getting a lot of attention? And which of these do you think are going to have the greatest impact or potential? So use a crystal ball a little bit for me. Who wants to dive in on this one? I, I think Dr. Handelsman is probably the expert, uh, perhaps Dr. Calabrese. Maybe line, you so. know some more. Because of where <laughs> Which you is are. the best I mean, tea I'm... leaf reader on the panel? Well, is that what yeah. you're yeah, I mean, if, you, if you focus on diabetes, there's a ton of drugs in the late phase pipeline. I think you know 25 or so that are targeted to actually treat diabetes or treat some complication thereof. Uh, I think there's a lot of promise. I think the bulk of, of the development, however, is in some of the categories we've already talked about. It's the SGL2s, it's the dual PPAR agents, it's the, you know, we've got a, a number of GLP-1 analogs that are still out there in development. We've got more DPP-4 agents. Um, you know, I think as a whole, they're, they, you know, they bring value in terms of, um, Again, expanding that, that armamentarium of options for clinicians to choose from and to be able to better tailor treatment, as Ken talked about earlier, to the specific patient and their specific needs. And perhaps one of the more exciting areas that is, that, that is a, a bit of a paradigm, we're now starting to look at vaccines and we're starting to look at gene therapies. It, um, they've been looked at for a while, but they're starting to get to the point of being in the discussion of potentially being available for the type 1 diabetics to, to impact the autoimmune process. You're getting some drugs looked at for that. You're, you're looking at drugs in type 2 um, vaccines that, that, that may help. So there, there's some very interesting so, paradigms yeah, so going So a lot on. of things going on. In terms of the type 1 and the vaccine, we are going to wait many more years. There is some autoimmune management looking at attacking specific CD3 or T cells that may work in type 1. The type 2 arena may be somewhat more um, exciting. We are going to look long-acting once a week GLP-1, looking at once a month's GLP-1. We are looking into a once a week DPP-4. We are looking actually at inhaled GLP-1. So still within the drugs that we have, but or, they're much easier. Oral insulin is being explored. And oral insulin is good. But oral insulin, I don't give as much hope <laughs> as I get, look at for, even though it will come, it will come. But, but the ability to titrate where you need, and you still have hypoglycemia to deal with, which you don't have maybe with the other drugs. So there are a couple newer agents further down the pipeline that would be very interesting. In terms of lipids, I think by having Lipitor right now as generic, we are going to do a terrific work out there and fibrates are generics. We can have a great work out there. There is some excitement in couple products looking at improved HDL and reduced triglyceride as well as further reduction in LDL. There's an autoimmune product for LDL reduction. And just before you continue, very important to also mention the obesity drugs. There are already a couple obesity drugs approved, perhaps one, two will come more. Not only will they reduce obesity, but they will also reduce the cardio uh, metabolic aspect, reduce glucose, reduce lipid, and so if on. If the so effects are sustainable. If they are. Now, uh, and we have to look again at those who are willing to treat or those who are completers. Right. Let's not look at averages. I think the drug will help 30 to 40 percent of the ones that will start on it, and those will lose a lot. And I think 30, 40 percent of my patients, it's a nice number. Well, do you lean, number. can I ask a question? Do yeah. you lean more towards the GLP-1 agents, because, drugs like the Bietas, the Bidurians, the Victozas, because of the weight impact that they have? Well, to some extent, I do lean toward there, of course, and not so much the Bieta, because the twice a, a day did not work. The once a week works. Uh, and I say also, again, it's a potent drug. I get a 1 to 1.3 to 1.4 effect on the A1C, even if I started low. So I can have a GLP-1 in a metformin, which will give me 2.5%. Now I take anybody from 8, you know, 8.5 A1C, 9 A1C, and I get them very close to goal, just with these two drugs. And the weight Metformin loss GLP appears to be sustainable, which translates into lower blood pressure, lower Together. cholesterol, lower... And breath. if I need to add an SGLT2 on the two of them, now you're looking at really, we, we are an exciting time, if, if you want to know. We're really looking forward to it.